Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to part two of how to help poorly guinea pigs. As a reminder, in part one we looked at how to recognise the signs that your guinea pig is unwell and needs urgent help, as well as visiting the vets and what you should expect from them in terms of a treatment plan. This episode covers all the products and everything you can do at home to support your piggy both before and after the vets. Right, so I have everything here in front of me on display. And the first thing that we are going to go over is recovery food. So if you don't know what recovery food is, it is basically a dry ground up food mixture that's nutrient rich and fiber rich. And it's for us to feed our guinea pigs, usually via a syringe or off a spoon if they'll take it when they're poorly and they're not eating or not eating enough for themselves. And it might sound a bit traumatic when I say syringe feed, essentially you are squirting a bit of the paste into their mouth and forcing them to eat it but it isn't as brutal as it sounds and if we don't do it then they will only go downhill more and as you can see here there are a variety of brands so here in the middle we have the Emeraid Sustain and then we also have three different flavors of the critical care Oxbow critical care is probably the main brand that you've heard of and it probably is the best and then down here we also also have a Burgess one which is the XL Dual Care and this one is a bit different it is actually in pellet form so you can dissolve these and feed them as a paste as you would the others or you can slowly transition them over to eating the pellets for themselves which I think is a pretty neat idea that definitely did not go back in the packet so those are some of the main brands and how I feed recovery food and this is the best way that I found some people might have other methods but it is basically using this one mil syringe. And what I've done with these ones is cut off the end so it's so much easier to suck up the kind of paste that you've got with the recovery food. And I basically just do this with a massive bread knife. It does the job really well. Another method would be to use a bigger syringe, but the only problem with that is you are at risk of putting too much food in their mouth at once and potentially having them aspirate or breathe it in, which is obviously not a good thing. We don't want that to happen. And if they are very poorly then you're only putting you know 0.2 of a mil in at once. Generally they will happily be able to fit 0.5 or even a whole mil in their mouth at once so that's a good kind of guide for you. And I will put in some footage now of me feeding Pedro. As you can see he is wrapped up tightly so that's another crucial thing to have when you're going to be feeding them recovery food is a blanket or even a pillowcase works quite well to essentially make them into a piggy burrito. <laughs> so you wrap them up tightly, you snuggle them up close to you and you can kind of arc your way around so you can see their mouth and with the syringe you're wanting to pop it in one side of their mouth, one side of the incisors, and then just squirt in however much you think they're ready to take. And you might be wondering how much of this stuff do we need to give them? And it does vary depending on whether they're eating for themselves or not. There are instructions on the back of the packet. I think for the critical care, it's like three tablespoons of it mixed up with water for a whole day, which is a lot. And guinea pigs do need a lot of food. They pretty much spend all of their time eating. So we have to make sure we're giving them enough. You might be giving 10, 15, 20 mils, 20 of these in one sitting and you'll be doing that every four to six hours ish more frequently and less at a time if they are feeling poorly and not wanting to have as much. And just a quick note on these syringes, the vets will give you some but it's probably not going to be enough for recovery feeding and the medications and water so I highly recommend just buying loads of them <laughs> and you can off Amazon get packs of a hundred of these for like 10 pounds, 10 dollars ish. So that is the recovery food and next up we have just plain old water. I think it's something that isn't communicated enough by the vets and certainly when I was syringe feeding a guinea pig for the very first time I don't think I gave any water as well as the recovery food when really we need to be giving quite a lot of water and the way I do it is as well with these one 
windmill syringes, don't cut off the end for water. And standard advice for guinea pigs and staying hydrated is that they need 100 mil per kilo of body weight. That's 100 of these. <laughs> That's a lot of water. Now, obviously they are going to be getting some mixed in with the recovery food. So you don't quite need to give 100, but I would easily give at least 10 mil before each feed. And it's usually recommended to give water first for any poorly animal as it can help with the appetite. It can also help with the uptake of food and medications like I mentioned earlier. So the next measure is something that I've kind of come up with myself and I do use it every time I'm dealing with a poorly guinea pig. And it is just to simply get a cardboard box and put them in it between feeds or when you're giving them a little break and have in there all stuffed with hay. So it encourages them to have a little nibble for themselves. And most importantly, it's a really good way for us to monitor them. So I'll pop him in, in between water and food say, and I will just watch him for a while. Is he just sat there being lethargic and hating the world? Or is he actually going to try and eat a little bit of hay for himself? And what are his poops like? And yet Pedro is actually in here. <laughs> so you might feel like you have just fed them quite a lot and they should have a relatively full tummy. But what I often find works is that feeding them the recovery food, giving them water actually sparks their appetite. So it's at that time just after you fed them where it's really important to see whether they're eating for themselves. And it might be that moment where you start to see them eating a few strands of hay. And it's then when you feel so, so proud of them, your hard work is starting to pay off and they are starting to eat a little bit by themselves. As well, when you're using the box and encouraging them to eat more on their own, it's useful to get in some more interesting haze, get in some maybe really good quality Timothy hay. Another thing which I tried as well was hay cookies and it's just giving hay in different forms really to keep them interested. And if you're wondering about fresh food and our vegetables, whenever I've had a poorly guinea pig and I know there's digestive problems going on, I've just avoided it completely. The standard advice with bloat GI stasis is that vegetables are actually relatively low fiber compared to the hay and it's the fiber that they need to get their digestion digestive system going. Moving on to medications. Now I kind of ran through briefly what the vets might prescribe and why, but I didn't give you any specific examples or tell you how it's given. And that one is an easy question to answer. Get out the one mil syringes again and your vets will give you a specific measurement to the 0.01 mil of whatever drug they should be given. And just bear in mind that the amount given does vary a lot between different medications, depending on concentration and how well the guinea pigs deal with them. So one tenth of this is 0.1 mil and you might sometimes get measurements that are 0.05 mil say and that's not half of the syringe it is half of one tenth of the syringe so i'm sure that's immediately obvious to lots of people but when you're stressed and in the moment it can be easy to misread something and then give the wrong dose by accident so be super clear on the measurements on the syringe and what you've been told to give your guinea pig by the vet okay so in my collection of stuff here we are going to start off with painkillers and this is metacam which is by far the most popular painkiller anti-inflammatory that vets will use. The actual active drug in it is called meloxicam. And metacam comes in different concentrations and the amount you give is based on your guinea pig's weight and the concentration of the medicine. Unfortunately, I think there is a bit of a problem with non-exotics vets not prescribing doses of metacam that are high enough. Disclaimer, I'm not a vet in any way, shape or form. This is based on my personal experiences alone. Guinea pig specialists will say that an adult normal weight guinea pig of you know, around a kilo can be given up to 0.8 or one mil twice a day of the dog strength Metacam. And in contrast to that, I've had normal non-exotics vets prescribe 0.1 mil twice a day of the lowest concentration one. And the difference is so drastic. And I think it's because non-exotics vets, especially if they don't see that many guinea pigs, are using reference sources that are way out of date and are just extrapolating down from cat and dog weights to how much a guinea pig should need when actually guinea pigs process this stuff quite quickly. So relative to their size, they need a much higher dose. I don't want to blab on about it anymore. It would be useful to know in the comments below if you've had similar experiences with Metacal 
Instagram. But basically my message is don't be afraid to question the dose and ask if they have consulted an exotic vet when they're deciding the dose because it can be too low in certain situations. And if it's not enough, then it's not relieving their pain and it's not going to help them want to start eating on their own again. Moving on now to the gut stimulants. And one you might have heard of is called ranitidine. Unfortunately, this one isn't available in the UK anymore, although you might get some vets stockpiling it. At least that's what I've been told by my guinea pig specialist when I asked about it. What's usually used instead these days is something called metachlorpramide, which is known under the name of emaprid. Emaprid usually works in the stomach area and it specifically helps to empty the stomach. So it can help with the general movement of guts that way, but because it's focused on one part of the digestive system, it usually needs to be paired with another drug to have a stronger effect and make them work together. And that other drug is usually one called cisapride. So cisapride works on the lower digestive system and that's why it's a nice pairing with emaprid. So if you are prescribed just one and not the other and you want to understand why, then it's an easy question just to ask your vets about. Now there are other prokinetics and gut stimulants out there, but these are the two that I've always been prescribed and I think are by far the most common ones. Next up is antibiotics. And you might be prescribed these if your vet thinks there's some kind of bacterial infection going on. Pedro wasn't prescribed any this time, but in the past for tummy troubles, we have been prescribed something called <laughs> metronizadot. I knew I'd mess that up. Metronidazole. Metroniz... You heard it once, that's enough. <laughs> and that can help with um, a gut uh, imbalance of the bacteria. And especially if there's any nasty bacteria that cause diarrhea, then that can be used to get rid of those. More common antibiotics used for infections in other areas of the body include Batril, which is the only licensed antibiotic for guinea pigs. Batril is usually okay, but some guinea pigs do have an intolerance to it because it can kill off good bacteria in the guts and cause digestive problems. There are some unlicensed alternatives though and one that is known to be kinder on the digestive system is pediatric septron or cotrimoxazole. <laughs> I think I got that one right. And it's a combination of two antibiotics, the specific names I will put on the screen now because I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce them. But different antibiotics are effective for different infections in different areas of the body and of course an exotics vet is the one to give you the best advice and on the dosing as well. Talking about antibiotics, brings us nicely onto the next thing in my pile of goodies here, which is probiotics. So probiotics can be used along with antibiotics, usually given one to two hours before you give the antibiotic to kind of combat any negative effects that they might have on the digestive system, especially with ones like Batril. Probiotics can also be good for stabilizing the gut, especially if there's an imbalance of bacteria in there. The science behind this isn't really proven, but I'd say it's better to give something that's not going to cause any harm and could be a good thing rather than not give it and leave it out completely. So these are the two probiotics I've used with my own guinea pigs. First up we have the Pro-C. This one comes in a powder form that you dissolve in water. The only thing I would say about Pro-C is that the dosing is a bit vague. It says dissolve one spoonful in 200 mils of water but how much of that water is the guinea pig meant to get? So what I've done when I have used it is use it for some of the water that I give Pedro maybe half of it and then half I just do normal water. The next one we've got here is called Fiberplex and a lot of rabbit and guinea pig owners stand by this one and really really recommend it. Now the dosing on Fiberplex is more specific. It comes in this syringe and you basically turn this bit on the end to give usually one mil at a time and you give one mil per kilogram of body weight three times a day I believe it says. And with this one you can either squirt it straight into the mouth but sometimes it comes out a bit violent Violently, uh, or you can just mix it in with the recovery food and that's what I've been doing for Pedro. Next up we have something that definitely shouldn't be forgotten about and it is massaging. So you can do this obviously with your hands and also you can get yourself one of these which is a sort of vibrating massager thingy. <laughs> you can get them off Amazon and the idea of massaging is just to help our guinea pigs guts get moving physically, mechanically, along alongside the motility drug 
drugs that we're giving them. It can help physically move through gas and move through food and get things going back to normal. Don't be afraid to press like reasonably hard. Obviously don't do it that hard if they're squeaking out in pain or anything, but you can apply a reasonable amount of pressure with it. And sometimes you can sort of feel the bubbles of gas and almost feel them moving along. Sometimes you'll get a big like where it all sort of seems to move on to the next stage and you feel like, yes, you're winning. So as well as the hand massages, I'll use this for, you know, a few minutes, five minutes, and I'll just press it against him either underneath or on the side on each side, move him around a little bit until I feel like we've had it focused on different areas of his abdomen. And with all these things, as I mentioned, I would highly recommend stocking up in advance of when you need them. I have all of these things in my Amazon storefronts. I have one for the UK, one for the US. Before this video, I've made sure to go through all of the listings, make sure they're all in stock so you can find examples of these things fairly easily. And of course, if you do use my storefront links, then I get a teeny tiny bit of commission. So thank you for that. I know this has been a long one with lots of information to take on board, but hopefully you'll agree it's a really important topic. And if you got to this point in the video, then let me know by putting the little sunflower emoji and I will keep my eye out for those in the comment section. Also, if you've watched this and you have a poly piggy at the moment, then my heart goes out to you. Best of luck getting them back to full health. I know how stressful and worrying it can be at this time, but know that you're doing everything you can to help them feel better and fingers crossed in the healing vibes for your piggy. Also if you want to learn more about bloat which is a common problem in guinea pigs including the signs and symptoms, different causes and prevention then I will leave this video for you to check out next which is all about bloat specifically. Okay guys I hope you enjoyed watching, I hope you learned something new and as always thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you in the next one! Bye-bye.